This hat was filled with my chemical inventory long before I started filming the first video. As a result, sometimes the chemical is drawn and it's already gone, like the pyrogallol sodium hydroxide luminol solution that was tested and found to be inactive in the fourth video of the chemical storage cleanup series. What you're seeing now is the very first selection made from the hat when I filmed that last video. It was ferroin, but most of that got used up in the first series of videos on oscillating reactions. So what am I going to do with it? Its use in demonstrations is pretty much limited to reactions in the belosov shabatinsky class. Plus, there's not a lot left, as you can see. With less than 20 milliliters, there aren't a lot of options, so why not see what I can learn about this stuff with the last little bit? As you may recall from the oscillating reactions video, ferroin is a complex of iron and phenanthroline. Its color depends on the oxidation state of iron, and therefore the nature of its environment. In a reducing environment, it stays red, and in an oxidizing environment, it turns blue. So with the last few milliliters I have, I'm going to see just how oxidizing an environment it needs before it turns blue. Here I have six test tubes of different oxidizers, and I'm going to add about two milliliters of ferroin to each one. The first one, all the way on the right, is just some distilled water to use as a control. As you can see, it's a clear red color. The first test is 6 molar sodium hydroxide. Why, you might ask? Well, that's a good question. When I think of reduction, one of the things that comes to mind is hydrogen ions. And in water, the opposite of hydrogen is hydroxide. So since I'm just in pure experiment mode right now, I wanted to see what happened with sodium hydroxide. And a whole lot of nothing is the answer but it's still a result. Next up is some drugstore 3% hydrogen peroxide. It is an oxidizer, but it's not really a very strong one. So let's see what the ferroin says. Well, apparently it says it's not strong enough to turn it blue. The next tube contains an approximately one molar solution of magnesium nitrate. Nitrates are known to be oxidizers, and so why not? I chose magnesium rather than sodium or potassium because I figured there are two nitrates per mole rather than just one. But that's still not enough. While we're on the subject of nitrates, this is a 6 molar nitric acid solution. I have to say, I'm a little surprised that it's not turning blue. Wait a minute. What's this? All right, now we're talking. And as all of the ferroin solution is oxidized, you can see that it goes to a pretty clear blue color. And it's a lovely shade, if I must say so. Well, as you can see from the beaker, that brings us to the end of the ferroin solution. This last tube is 35% hydrogen peroxide, which I'm assuming is going to have the same reaction as the nitric acid did. But stir and stir as I might, I was wrong, and I am shocked. It seems like it wants to be a little bit darker, but it's just not turning any kind of blue. Not even that dark, muddy kind of blue. I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm left with no choice. I just added a dropper full of concentrated sulfuric acid. That's right. I'm trying piranha. Well, a weak version anyway. Apparently a very weak version. There's a little bit of darkening, which means that some of the ferroin is being oxidized, and we have a mixture of mostly red and some blue. But Come on, this is like piranha solution. What the heck? I guess I'll have to add another squirt. 
it does darken up here, so you can see that some of the ferroin is starting to be oxidized. Maybe with a good stir, we'll get that nice clear blue color. Or maybe not. I can't believe this stuff. All right, let's try it. Is the third time going to be the charm? Again, we see another darkening, but let's stir it up. I actually can't believe this. As much as I'm trying, it's not going to turn clear. Unbelievable. Well, I set out with my last 12 milliliters of ferroin to learn something about what it takes to oxidize ferroin. And I learned something, and I'm amazed. I can't believe that 35% peroxide didn't turn it blue, and I really can't believe that 30% peroxide with three squirts of concentrated sulfuric acid didn't make it all the way either. So, I learned something. I call that a good day. Well, it's taking a little bit longer to work on that potassium phosphate video than I thought it would, and I'm sure you haven't noticed, but I'm having some audio problems as well. So, I'm working on it, and that potassium phosphate video should be out in a couple of days. Until then, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.